the werewolf roar has always been one of those things where the canon conflicts with what I witnessed while watching the show. These clips sound exactly the same to me. If anything, Scott's very first roar is deeper and more impressive than Peter's roar in Night School. Then there's Deucalion's roar that doesn't sound exactly the same as Peter's, but had a similar effect on Scott. Now, Canon tells us that Peter and Deucalion had a little something extra in their roar that caused Scott to transform. I can do it. You can? Yeah, remember the night that Peter trapped us in the school? In the gym, he was able to make me turn using just his voice. Deucalion did the same thing in the distillery. just can't hear it. They are different, but they're not especially louder or anything else. In fact, I still think Scott's very first roar is the most impressive. But back to season three. Scott needed to roar in order to get Malia to change back, and here's what he eventually did. <laughs> It doesn't sound all that different to me from his first roar. There might be a few higher notes in there, but that could just be the difference in the recordings I have. It just seems the same to me, and yet it did manage the desired effect. Now, I'm not a person to just let a canon conflict like this sit, so I took it to Jeff directly asking what is the effect of the roar on both Supernatural and the human folks involved with Scott. Now, Jeff says it's kind of a clarion call for Scott's betas and that the effect extends to the non-Supernatural members of the pack. They did that eye glow thing with Isaac to show how the roar actually gives his betas strength and courage at the same time. Jeff then compared it to this scene from Return of the King, in which a bunch of scared men and women are about to take on a massive army of monstrous foes. Yeah! Now, I understand the science behind the rousing battlefield speech from Tolkien. These people are in total fight or flight mode. Adrenaline and other brain-pumping chemicals are flooding their bodies raising their heart rates and making them sweat. The speech, or in the case of Teen Wolf, the roar, speaks to the most primitive portion of the brain and produces even more of those chemicals until they're all totally pumped. This is what we see with Styles' reaction. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. But in the Supernaturals, we have the added element of a divine spark that has an even deeper well of primitive understanding. The roar speaks to the monster and brings it out. <laughs> In season one, we saw this was particularly difficult for Scott to control. He had a fit and, in fact, gave in to the primitive instinct. But by season three, Scott had gained enough control to resist his monster. It still showed on his face, but he didn't lose it. <laughs> 